and I'm so glad uh, you both are there. Thank you. I'm so blessed. Uh, very good morning to all of you. We are so thrilled and joyed to be here, to be able to meet, spend time with all of you. Uh, it's, it's a pleasure and we thank God for giving us that opportunity and time to be here. And while we are here, I bring uh, greetings from my mom uh, and our daughter Anna. Uh, our mom, uh, I'll get her next time when we'll drive uh, and come to Hyderabad because she has trouble if we, when we come through the uh, railways. Yeah. So uh, today, over the last three days, uh, we are meeting as a team, NMT. Then we met uh, as a greater team, leadership team. Then we also met uh, Pastor Chandu on seeing how the uh, amalgamation process is going on. And we are so excited that the journey has started. And uh, I would like all of you to keep that in prayer, that the Holy Spirit lead that process so well. And in turn, all of us are blessed. Well, uh, I'm also privileged that within the season of Epiphany, I have a privilege to bring the message twice, right? Because last time when I came, I think I talk about the theme for the second week that was God's divine knowledge of us. He know us intimately. And when we know that, that creates such a confidence in us that we are no one, but we are chosen and not just that even before our birth he has chosen us that brings the confidence and then the theme for the week third was responding to the epiphany now responding to the epiphany means responding to the revelation of jesus and what did that responded in in worship and repentance and now we are on our third week of the epiphany and the theme for this week is service to God. Service to God. Now, one would wonder how would the subject of epiphany would lead to service to God. Because from a humanly point of view, when it comes to serving, serving in the church or serving elsewhere, we always have our own parameters, conditions why we serve. Sometimes we serve because we think we have time and means to serve. So that means we have availability and so we serve in the church. Sometimes we serve because we think we have gifts and talents and because I have to serve now because I have gifts and talents so let me exercise that. Sometimes we serve because others are serving it would not look good. If I just sit down, it would not look good, so rather let me also serve. And sometimes we serve because in many churches it is mandatory for everyone to play a certain role in the church as per their guidelines or their rules. So if you see, somehow we always end up putting serving in some of a bound, some of compulsion, some, some, somehow this thing. And because of that perception, it becomes difficult for us to correlate epiphany of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Imagine how could that lead us to serve him. In today's session, let's find that out. And we don't need to search more because Christ himself has given us the reason of why the epiphany would lead us to service to God. Now, we go to Mark chapter 12, verse 30 to 31st, and he himself gives us the reason. He says, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. And then he goes on to say, the second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than this. There is no commandment greater than this. Serving God, you know, here Jesus brings the first aspect of our service, of our response of God's love 
to service to God. Because serving God must come as from our expression of love and devotion. So if you have to love your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind and with all your strength, it has to lead us to serve God. That's one of the response to the love. And when we receive God's love, that's somehow the only way to respond. We saw how the uh, Bajais have responded. They worshipped him. And when we uh, have the epiphany it, and we receive the God's love, it responds in serving him. So, serving, serving him is one of the way of expressing our love back to him. Now, the beautiful thing to note here is that serving comes out without any compulsion, no bounds, no restriction, no rules or any obligation. Serving comes naturally out of love for God. That's the expression of God's love. Now, God has made and, and God has loved us. We, we, we are not loving God. God has loved us first and so we are responding it back. And God has made it very obvious in John chapter 3 verse 16. When he says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son. That whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. And that expression of love Jesus has expressed us by coming on to this earth becoming like one of us. And he served other instead of being served. The very king and the lord of the lords, the god of gods, being among us, he came to serve instead of being served. He showed us what is love. Right? Now, Jesus' life... I lost my... Yeah. Yeah. So, serving God is an expression of our love and devotion to Him. I lost my... Yeah. So, Jesus' life serves the ultimate example of selfless service that comes out of sheer love for us. His every act toward us came out of sheer love. No expectation at all. Yeah? Now, we heard Hasini uh, reading in detail uh, from John chapter 13, verse 1 to 17. Yeah? Uh, Jesus washing the disciples' uh, feet. Now, let's try to decode that from the serving perspective. Now, let's first go to verse 4 and 5. Now, here you will see that John takes a lot to mention it in a very detail. He could have directly take us to the scenario of washing the feet. But you just see here, so he got up from the meal. That means the meal was served. He got up, took off his outer clothing, wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. Now, I'll tell you, the, the scenario then was, it was almost insulting for the Jew and demeaning for them to wash somebody else's feet. It was normally done by the servants. But here, as detailed by John, Jesus really get into the role of a slave by foot washing, even removing his outer garment and putting a towel around him, the look of a slave. Yeah? He go down to that level for, for them. Then as we go now to verse 12 and 14. Yeah? Now here, what he says, while explaining to them what he has done, Jesus established the fact that he is indeed their Lord and teacher. 
and being their lord and teacher he has got down to that level that he is washing their feet and then he says imitate me he accept and acknowledge the fact the lord and teacher i am correct and then he says imitate me here jesus bring the second aspect of our response of god's love back that is by serving one another the first aspect was serving god and the second aspect is serving one another now serving one another without thinking of our position our rank our status putting the other person above us can only come when we have genuine god's love for each other let me tell you if you put that human love so many boundaries will stop can i do this what is this i never did this somebody else is watching but if you have god's love and if you have god's love for the your brother and sister you would go down to that level because we love and you will go down to that level to serve one another now let's go to the third aspect of the uh, section verse 15 to 17 now jesus makes it very clear that love take first preference everything else come later and when he says imitate me uh, he says such act would bring blessings such act would bring blessing that means not only when you when you are serving with god's love to each other you would also be blessed and so now to conclude our first part we can say service to god and service to one another is an response of genuine love that god has revealed us through the epiphany and epiphany is what a revelation of jesus christ to the entire world okay now in the second part as we go we'll see how we can express the response of god's love to us as a service because we have now identified now we'll say how do we practice service to god and service to one another yeah now with this renewed knowledge if i ask you now to look back into your previous perspective of serving would you still have reservation while getting up from your seat and help something in the church would you still believe that it is the work of only some some of the privileged one who are very good in serving god would you still believe that serving is not your calling and if you still have reservation you go back and see you go back and witness the epiphany the revelation of jesus christ the revelation of god revealed in jesus and by the help of the holy spirit we understood that and see if we can respond back with the same love for one another and for god so now let's see <coughs> serving to god and serving to one another is an expression of our response of genuine love that god has revealed to us through the epiphany now let's read now uh, if i tell you that god has a purpose for each one of us no one is excuse number one god has a purpose for each one of us god has gift given us gifts and talents to to serve him and god holds us accountable for the practice of same and let me break that down to see that now we read it in uh am i running so fast yeah yeah we read first part in ephesians chapter 2 verse 10 for we are god's handiwork masterpiece each one of you children adult each one of us is god talented masterpiece no one is excuse created in the lord jesus christ himself for what purpose 
to do good work. What kind of work? The work that he has already planned for us to do. What a precise planning God has done for each one of us. Each one of us. And my dear brothers and sisters, that is our purpose. That is our purpose. Now, along with the purpose, he has also enabled us with gifts and talents. And that we can read it in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 4 and 7. Apostle Paul reminds us that each one of us has been given a different spiritual gifts by the same spirit for the common good. Let's read it together. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same spirit distributes them. Different kinds of gifts you and I have received. And it's the same spirit that distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. So you and I might be doing different service to him. It's the same Lord. And there are different kinds of working, but the, the sticker. But all of them, and in everyone, it is the same God at work. It is the same God at work. So each of us has a special gift. These gifts are not for our own glory. So if tomorrow I preach well, it is not to my glory or not to my well preparation or not to something I did a wonderful study and compose it together, but for the glory of God which he has placed a message in my heart which I was able to share with you. So these gifts are not for our own glory, but for the service and edification for the body of Christ. So every gift that you will practice is a service to him. And at the same time, it will edify the body. Even a small thing, kids, when you do, lifting the chair, supporting with that, helping with the food when it is served, taking the dishes outside, sometimes just bringing the water. All of this service is bringing glory to our God. Amen. Now, knowing that, we cannot sit idle. We cannot sit idle because God made us accountable for that. Now, before I move, uh, I, I'll move and then I'll, we'll come back to one interesting topic we were discussing, discussing in the greater leadership team. Now, God makes us accountable and we see that in the parable of talents in Matthew chapter 25 verse 14 to 30. Now, Jesus emphasized the importance of faithful stewardship in the talents of this one. So, God has entrusted us with various talents and he expects us to use them wisely and multiply them. Use, the, use them wisely, the talent we have, grow the talent we have so that we can, we can glorify God for his kingdom. And now yesterday, now I will come back to what we were discussing. Now yesterday we were saying, uh, do, are we practicing too much of grace? And now with that intent, I will give you to this thing. Now, can I latch on to grace if I say, it is okay, I got a gift, but I don't need to practice it. Grace of God is there, no? He will understand. Do you think? Or, grace of God, or grace of God will allow me, even when I give my 90%, 9, 80%, 40%, 10%, grace of God will help me? Absolutely yes, because I have tried. But I cannot latch on to grace, saying it is okay, I will not do it. Because grace is there, no? We cannot take God for granted. His love is there and His love compels us, propels us in response to do what He has purposed us to do. Right? So when you go home, read Matthew 25 verse 14 to 30, the parable of talents. 
now we might argue that serving god is okay yaar okay i'll serve god but serving others is a little reserving because you will say i am a uh, you know what kind of personality i am i don't know how to talk people i don't know how to serve people i don't know how to greet people how can i do that well then apostle paul again uh, reminds us in galatians chapter 5 verse 13 to 14 he says you my brothers and sisters we are called to be free we are called to be free we are on our own decision still we need to take right but he says but do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh rather serve one another humbly in love so he is making an appeal from god's love we are free we are free to respond but but he is saying use that freedom to to serve one another humbly like christ has got himself to the level of a slave right for the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this command love your neighbor as yourself love your neighbor as yourself now because the love of god encourages us to serve one another in love humanly it's not possible but love of god will encourage us to serve one another in love and through our service what will happen we will be transformed and become more and more like christ and we'll start reflecting his very character in us what a transformation will happen my dear brother and sister you'll hold on to your gifts and if you'll not serve each other if not serve god this transformation will not happen so get out of your comfort zone and let the transformation happens by now the by the way our response to the epiphany of the love of god results not only in service to god reason not only in service to one another but we are also to service the world do you know we are also it's not just to one another but it goes beyond the premises of the church we are called to be an ambassadors of reconciliation to the world we are called to be ambassador for what reconciliation to the world and apostle paul reminds us that in chapter, uh, 2 corinthians chapter 5 verse 18 to 20 he says all this is from god who reconciled us to himself through christ and gave us gave us the ministry of reconciliation hallelujah that god was reconciling the world to himself in christ not counting people sin against them and he has committed to us this message of reconciliation this is a unique way in which we participate with christ as he is reconciling humanity back to his father by the power of the spirit and who we are we are therefore christ ambassadors as though god who are making an appeal through us not directly or through you and me imagine to a person who don't know christ god is making him an appeal through you who is this the creator of heaven and earth the alpha and the omega the beginning and the end the king of the kings is making an appeal through you what a privilege to serve him to serve him right we are ambassadors for christ entrusted with the ministry of reconciliation through our service and through our service we become instruments of god's message of reconciliation for the broken world look outside is the world perfect is broken families broken relationship broken law and order broken it needs reconciliation and what better reconciliation we can offer for the reconciliation to the very one who has created the entire earth correct so now as we delve into the theme of service to god on this fifth week of the epiphany let us remember that our service is outpouring of our love for our, for god 
it's an outpouring. Always service is an outpouring God. Our faith is no more passive. It's vibrant. It's a living relationship with God the Father. Through Jesus the Son, by the Holy Spirit, that propel us to live the life of service and love. That is how uh, life has to be characterized, by the life of service and love. And by utilizing our gifts and talents God has given us, we participate in his redemptive plan for the world, sharing the message of reconciliation and building his kingdom. And you know, one more freedom we have as we respond to God's love as revealed to us in Jesus by the Spirit. We have one more freedom. We participate in the life of God. We, in our humanly sinful self, we get to participate in the very life of God by the finished work of Christ on the cross by the Spirit. What a privilege. What a privilege we have. You know, in the sacrament of Lord's Supper, we partake the bread and wine in remembrance of our Savior proclaiming his death until he comes. Now, the Lord's Supper is a participation in the death and resurrection of our Lord. Just as the bread and wine become part of our physical body, we are made by grace to partake spiritually of Jesus Christ in his body and in his blood. And thus, the Lord's Supper declares to believers that in every aspect of our Christian life, every aspect of our Christian life, we rely not on our own obedience, not on our own righteousness, but solely upon the grace of God incarnate in Jesus Christ. His grace, His grace alone. Full stop. Now I will uh, invite Pastor Praveen to join with me uh, as we all partake in the Holy Communion. Apostle Paul writes in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, 23 to 26. For I have received from the Lord that which also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you, do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Let's look unto, Lord, look unto the Lord in prayer. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have disobeyed your holy laws, made errors, and wandered from your paths like lost sheep, and followed our own desires and schemes far too often. We have also done things that we should not have done and left undone things that we should have done. But you, O Lord, show us mercy. Pardon those who acknowledge their transgressions and restore those who are repentant. 
in accordance with the promises you made to humanity in Christ Jesus our Lord and grant O merciful Father for his sake that we may live a godly upright and sober life in uh, in the hereafter to the glory of your holy name indeed amen amen as we come to the table as repentant sinners christ wants to assure us of his forgiveness as we come with struggles christ wants to assure us of his living and loving presence as we come with our doubts Christ wants to touch us with the flesh and blood reality of his life which is in our midst. So in the name of our great high priest Jesus Christ our Lord and as his servants we declare that your sins are forgiven. Brethren this is a table not of the church but of the Lord. And it is for those who love him and for those who want to love him more. So come you who have much faith and you who have little. You who have been here often and you who are here not so long. You who have tried to follow Jesus and you who have failed. Because it is the Lord who invites you and it is his will that those who want him should meet him here. So, as the servants of the Lord, we would like to invite you to come, come forward and collect your elements so that as the body of Christ, we all can participate in the communion knowing that Jesus Christ has shed his blood to make a new covenant for us and his body has been broken so that we as the body of Christ may be built together. body of our Lord Jesus Christ which which was sorry brethren the body of our Lord Jesus Christ which was given for you preserve your body and soul unto your lasting life take and eat this in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving.
The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was shed for you, preserve your body and soul unto everlasting life. Drink this in remembrance that Christ's blood was shed for you, and be thankful. church as we serve God through our actions may his love shine brightly through us drawing others into the warmth of his grace may our service be a testimony of his transformative power of Christ and a beacon of hope in a world that was that's desperately need god's light so let's continue to serve god serve one another and serve the world because god has loved us and that's the only response we can have god bless you all